Paul Hogan and Shane Jacobson are a generation apart, but I suspect they share the same comedy genes. Their beginnings weren't all that flash. Hogue started out as a rigger on the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Shane got his big break emptying portaloos, but they've both cleaned up at the box office as quintessential Australian characters, Croc Dundee and Kenny. So I suppose it was inevitable that one day they'd get together. They've done it in a little film with a big heart called Charlie and Boots. And while Hoag's and Kenny are the stars, there was plenty of room in the script for extras, even an old crinkled character actor like myself. On a stormy afternoon in Tamworth, New South Wales, there's electricity in the air and something funny brewing as two generations of Australian comedy work up their latest routine. Let's get them off now. <laughs> <laughs> On the head this ugly, they actually have to use special effects to make you look normal. Shane Jacobson, still in his 30s, made his name as the heroic plumber in Kenny. Lynn here is actually not a makeup artist, she's a panel beater. <laughs> <laughs> He's teamed up with the immortal Paul Hogan, who at nearly 70 has had this nation laughing for half a century. Uh, seemed to have injured my knee. Me and Buffett here will pour, have shots at each other all day long. And the magic about this guy is, I've struck a lot of guys, comics that come out line after line, you know. He laughs. He never stops laughing. Uh, Paul's very flattering to me, but it's, uh, it's, which gets embarrassing for me because I spent my, my youth growing up admiring him. And, uh, you know, it's like being asked to fight a fire with Red Adair, you know. Do you want to fly with Biggles? You better believe it. So, uh, truth be told, if, so, if the script was shit ass, I still would have said yes. <laughs> the film's called Charlie and Boots, and it's not a studio production. It's being made outdoors in all kinds of weather. Yeah, you could call it special effects, but I actually think the technical term for it is shit weather. Yeah, well, that's part of the charm of the film, because Australia, I love our sunburned country, as we know. Of rugged mountain ranges and droughts and flooding rains, and we're getting a lot on this trip. So. It won't be as pretty as Australia, but um, it'll be real. Made in television, this is what we call the money shop. <laughs> This is perfect. The next thing we're doing is where we're caught in a drought. Uh, farmers haven't had any rain. As you can see, I don't know if this is going to work. With a tight budget and an even tighter shooting schedule, even when it's coming in sideways, the show must go on. Great effects. I mean, how do you do that? Just... This even they can't do. This is uh, it's the man upstairs. These are definitely God's tears coming down now. <laughs> Oh, it's a bit different from a studio film. As you've seen, look at this. I'm being attacked by the water as we speak. Oh, let's, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm <laughs> shedding from my... But look at I me, mean, look out there. Have you ever had second thoughts about maybe would it be easier just to do this in the studio and go home at night? No, no, there's nothing hard about it. Well, half the attraction was actually the, the fact that we weren't going to be in the studio. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. You know, that, yeah. that's, that's the fun of it. That's it. I'm, I, this is... I would never want to do, much as I love the movie Star Wars or Lord of the Rings or some of those things, where you... Uh, you have a big giant green screen and mm. you get in front of it and they yell out, OK, now there's a dragon coming, get your sword out. It's to your right. And you do all that. And in a studio, hour after hour, you don't even know what you've done to see the movie. I mean, that's not fun to me. No. Regardless um, of the paycheck or anything else. We're in a Kingswood, not a studio. That's a lot more fun. <laughs> and does not handle well. Haven't we been reminded of that? <laughs> And so to the film itself. It's about a bloke called Charlie, recently widowed, and about his relationship with his estranged son, Boots. You know what really gets me is that never got a tell mum I still loved her. Oh, mate, she knew that. I promise you, she knew. It's a road movie, quite literally, with the entire cast and crew carried in a convoy of 30 trucks on a 3,000 kilometre road trip from Warrnambool in the south to the far northern reaches of Queensland, shooting a movie as they go. There's like a cross between a gypsy encampment and a, and a United Nations refugee set up. Uh, sort of circus. Yeah, yeah, and it's a circus, like luxury yeah. of glamour of show business, it's all there. We're like, you're like carnies really. Yeah. Toothless and tattooed and just cruising the country. Do they often make movies like this anymore? Only in Australia. 
Hey, she gave you a phone number, didn't she? Yeah, but I didn't ask for it. That's what I'm for. No, Dad, that's not what you're here for. Actually, you know what, from now on, you can stay in the car. And it is such an Australian film, full of familiar faces and great cameos from some of our best-known actors. I've got to tell you, I'm not too crazy about flying, especially in small planes. Well, if you get scared, just close your eyes. That's what I do. Oh, fantastic. Well, you can always stay here. Look after the survey with Marge. Nah, your missus scares me. Yeah, that makes two of us. And roll playback. The film's also notable for its clever use of extras. Everywhere the filmmakers travelled, they called upon the hidden talents of the Australian heartland. Real people playing themselves and loving. Am I looking at the camera? Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a virgin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, never done this before. Right. The extraordinary thing is this will be seen around the world. <laughs> and it might be very successful. It might. Uh, well, I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it will be. Um, You're hoping to be spotted? Well, you never know. Who is that My guy 30 seconds from the left <laughs> yes. in the 12th row? You've got to start somewhere. Could, so, uh, there's a slight resemblance to Hugh Jackman, don't you? Think? Oh, pretty good, pretty well, good. Well, I'll take my shirt off and show you. <laughs> so they wanted to get some pretty Sheilas in this movie. Of course. Yes. Plenty in Tamworth. You know how old this lady is? Oh, about 60. <laughs> you are nice. She's 86. 86? Yes. She is doing well. And I just rushed after a young man. <laughs> then I had to slow down the next time. Now you're in the movies, you should be able to catch a younger man. <laughs> Thank you, too. You get, like, the Hollywood extras, and they've all got the resumes, and they 8 by 10 and they're all sliding into the camera, and they're all shoving scripts at you, and it's sort of, and they're all talking about their last success. And, but, you know, we're in a country town, and people are, oh, we're going to be in the film. Oh, and they'll come and they yeah. dance, or whatever they're supposed to do, all night, never complain. Thrilled to be in it. Oh, it's just, it's just great for us. Speed. Uh, set. And action. Let's face it. Everyone wants to be a movie star. But take your hands away, yeah? So put them there and take your hands away. OK, here we go. Even an old journo doesn't need to be asked twice. We'll just do it once more. We didn't know which way it would go. My role was a minor one, billed in the shooting script as confused barman number one. But I was prepared to play the part bigger. There's nothing finer than working with uh, some fantastic superior actors like Charles Woolley here. Fine performance, Oscar, Oscar material. Here we go, stand by. There was one extra there I thought might have had a little bit of talent. I wonder if you spotted him. Oh, a disheveled looking yeah. barman. It was a disheveled looking barman who looked like he'd spent too much time sampling the produce. And uh, when people spot the film, we'll just see if they can spot this rather legendary character. It'd be interesting to see if he ends up in the cutting room floor. Oh, no, no. Weather beaten faces like that don't come along every day. I'll let you be in my film if I can be in yours. OK, mate. Yeah. Well, you're the only man on set has got more wrinkles than I got. <laughs> Give him your wallet. He's got a knife. <laughs> That's not a knife. That's a knife. Every film made in Australia for the past 25 years has lived in the shadow of what this man achieved with Crocodile Dundee. Two beers, all right? One for me, one for me, mate. He's made millions, lives with his beautiful wife, Linda, in a beautiful home in Santa Barbara, California, and is a fair dinkum Hollywood star. Hugs, I hear that in Hollywood, you can measure the caliber of the man by the size of his caravan. Well, that's one of the expressions, yes. And the first thing I do when I get onto a set, I measure my trailer and then I measured Shane's too. Yeah. Fortunately, mine was eight inches longer than his, so I'm still here. So yours is but after here. so many years in the US, shooting this film allows Hoags to reconnect with his home. But we've got, like, the Hay Plains. There's nowhere else in the world yeah. like that, where you drive along and you just see the horizon in every direction, like you're on the moon or something. And you think, well, there's nothing to look at, but the fact that there's nothing to look at it gives you a feeling that you can't get anywhere else That's in, right. in this crowded world. Yeah. It's a set that you can't build, isn't no, it? No, you can't. No, and it's... You wouldn't have the time, would you? I think it's about 4 o'clock, I think. That's 4 o'clock. Yeah. You've been working out, then. <laughs> <laughs> working out to look like a deal. Beyond mere entertainment, what oh, this movie sorry. might represent <clears throat> is the changing of the guard between two generations of very funny Australians. As much as people think you're covered in shit and piss, you're not. It's 85% of it's water. 
Shane Jacobson's Kenny surprised everyone in 2006 with its heart and humour. I didn't want to see Kenny at first. People said about I said, oh, the dummy man. And I said, oh, no, we're not, not another Basil McKenzie thing, you know, with poo jokes and bodily function jokes. I said, oh, didn't we grow out of that? And someone said, no, no, it's all right. So I sat down and watched it and went, wow. Just blown away. Steve, there's another classic example. Someone having a two-inch arsehole and us only having installed one-inch piping. I mean, you'll be around forever, but if you hand it on the baton, is this the guy that you'd hand it to? Oh, no, I wouldn't want him to. I wouldn't hand the baton over to him. He's too funny. He'd wipe out my memory. <laughs> oh, I doubt <laughs> it. Bastard. I was a pretty useful footy player. Quick on my feet. But I couldn't dance for shit. <laughs> so this film brings together the mentor and his protege, the master and the apprentice. A dream come true for Shane Jacobson. I said before that you know half the attraction of doing this <laughs> was the landscape, but it was uh, there's there's you know the landscape is uh, legendary in Australia, but I'm working with a legend that is uh, that put the landscape on the map. You know, it's a human landscape icon, <laughs> and he's an icon and. Uh, Oh, we're back we're on. Back, back at work. Oh, it never stops, mate. Come on. <laughs> what Hugs and Shane have in common is box office success. <laughs> Both have been able to make films which have actually made money. But in such a fickle business, even they can't avoid the unhelpful advice from prospective investors. What are the money people like? Do you ever talk to them? They're wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> I have a good judgment. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fairly young, Charles. They're wonderful. I have a long career to go. <laughs> Best people I've ever met. Yeah, that was well, okay. <laughs> I, I don't have a long career. I, I've, I've never you had can a tell career. the truth. I retired 20 years ago. I can tell the truth. They put the money up so they think they know. You've got a guy who can't even make his own wife smile telling you how to be funny and, you know, because he's put money in. <laughs> Just occasionally, a small budget film like this hits the big time. Everyone wishes, but no one can ever predict it. That's the magic of the movies. If Charlie and Boots ever does become a big success, cut down though my role was, at least I can proudly say I had a hand in the making of that movie. If you go and see the film, just look for the hand in the bar. The hand comes in. And I've never seen a hand do so much. I think it was a bit much when you tried to get a little bit romantic and did that with your hands. That looks great at the Vatican, but I don't think it works behind the bar. Right, stay where you are, mate. <laughs> Forget about yeah, the film. You'll call me. Not Hello, I'm Amelia Adams. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for our brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.